it's a question we all ask ourselves. Why did the SEC sue Ripple? We all know the story that's out there. They classifying, they're classifying XRP as a security. I mean, they're saying that the executive staff of Ripple, uh, you know, basically had an, uh, an offering they shouldn't have done. They were selling security and you know, all that kind of stuff. We know all this, right? But I love that what the what John Deaton, who if you don't know who John Deaton is, he's the one pictured here in this article. Uh, he's not part of the legal defense team for Ripple. He's a lawyer who has uh, he's a pro XRP, you know, Ripple lawyer. And he's done a very good job in the past two plus years of explaining all the legal ins and outs of this case. And so anytime he talks or says something or is quoted in an article, I love to talk about it. Now here he's talking about the quote, real motive behind the SEC lawsuit against Ripple. And there's always interesting things to learn. Okay, and I wanna point some stuff out to you. So he, he was talking about what was the real motive? What happened? Now he doesn't answer the question here, what was the real motive? But what he does raise is some very interesting, there's some very interesting facts around when the lawsuit was settled I'm sorry, when the lawsuit was initiated from the SEC. OK, so I'll show you right here. So basically what what Deaton's asking is that he really wants to know what former SEC chair Jay Clayton discussed with Gary Gensler on December 21st, 2020. OK, wherein uh, according to Clayton's public count cal calendar, uh, SEC chairman, Clayton and Gensler met twice in the month of December. Okay. And they basically Clayton left his last official meeting with Gensler took place a day before the commission sued ripple and two of its exec. And he also was leaving. This was the sec chairman at that time, Clayton. So he was leaving and he left like literally the next day he was leaving his office. He was moving on. And yet they sued. This was very, unorthodox this doesn't really happen okay and so that's what's interesting about this and by the way this is the most significant non-fraud enforcement act since 1946 this lawsuit sec versus ripple there was also a mass exodus of other high-ranking sec officials that were involved in the ripple sec lawsuit that have left as well at that bit left around that time and this really all raises, you know, the question like like uh, like Deaton said, where, quote, it raises the question of called into the question, the use of discretion, the use of enforcement, all this. It's really interesting how all this has played out and why. What was the real motive behind this lawsuit? Was it truly regulation by enforcement? Um, this was very early. You know, this was two plus years ago or more actually, uh, when this all kind of went down. And so it, you know, it all started basically in December of 2020. It was basically three years ago almost. Okay. So it does raise the question. And, and what do you think? Drop in the comments below. Why do you think it really happened? What's your thoughts? Would love to hear from you. I'll keep an eye on this for you and hit that like button. That tells me that you want me to continue to cover XRP on my channel. I'll see you.